Hello and welcome back to ConsoleTraining.com's video series on uh, basics in 3.2. Uh, this is lesson 5 we're now in. So far we've built fixtures, or sorry, we've patched fixtures, imported presets, we've created a sequence, we've added cues to that sequence, and now we're going to play with some effects in our sequences. So let's jump straight in. So we're back exactly where we were, if you've watched our other episodes. We're going to go back to our screen 2, and we're going to modify our little, uh, our little view here. But before we do that, we're also going to save the view we've got here. To do that, just like everything else, we click Store, and these little sections along the side you'll find here, on screen 2, 3, and 4, are View buttons. So we can click on 1.1, and we're going to call it Program, and it's going to give us a little prompt as well. It's going to ask what screen do we want to save here. In this case, I just want to save screen 2, but if you're running with a larger console, you know, let's say a full size, and you wanted all three screens to change, or all four, or all of them, you could just select the screens here. But I only want to say what's on screen 2. Now what I can do is I can clear out this page, or I'm actually just going to modify it a bit, just to make space for our... Uh, for our um, effects pool. And I've just realized something. I've, uh, I've broken one of my own golden rules. If we look over here, we can see that in this position, our 250s are, uh, are not in fact in the right spot. Well, they're in the right spot, but I've used hard values. And the issue with hard values is, I can update the stage preset one, but if I wanted to recall or, you know, use the, the audience position again, I am unable to do that. But it's a simple fix. If we bring our pan tilt values back into the programmer, we click store, and we call it audience. And then we recall audience into our programmer. And we go update. Sorry. I need to store. Oh no, I should be able to go update. Oh, we have to go through the entire process. Click store, Q5. Click on our executor. We want to merge that data in. Then when we return, now we've got our position preset. So if I wanted to, for example, let's kill our playback for a sec. If I wanted to, let's just say it's a touring show or something, you know, if I recall my audience preset, and actually in this venue the audience is behind us for some reason. Let's say they're all, you know, uh, they're, they're a bit closer, they're in here. If I update this position preset, now when we go through our queue list, It's now taken the new position. It's a fantastic function to have. I assure you, the more you use it, the better it is. But even I get lazy. Anyway, we're creating effects. So we've got ourselves a little bit of free space here. If we click on any of that empty space and go to effects, we've got what's called an effects pool. Now we need to populate that with effects. To do that, we can right click, we can go load predefined, we can bring in all the predefined effects. Or what we can do is we can go Command, Setup, Auto Create, go to, sorry, go to Import Export, Import, Effects, and we can select all our effects that we want to import. I want to import them all, why not? And then we just click Import. And when we do that, they're going to start at Effect 2 because I've obviously put something in effect 1. We're going to go effect 1, we're going to go import, and it's going to import them all. And then it's asking, because I've got something in 1, which is just the blank effect I created, what do we want to do? We want to override it. Now, when we come back to our view, we've got all our effects. So if we grab our 250s, we've got all our effects. Lovely. So we've got a nice little dimmer sign, dimmer even odd. 
a rainbow, which won't work because it's a, 250, a Mac 250 and they're not seeing why. So we'll go that, and then we'll run our rainbow chase. Everyone loves a rainbow chase. I intensely dislike the rainbow chase. I think it's a really tacky thing to do. Oh, look. Anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to update a bit of our programming. So we're going to look at it the way we've done this. So our Q1, we've got our room look. And we've got, you know, a slow rotation on our 250s. If we now select our 250s, and we go to... What do we want? We want just a pan sign. We can create a nice little effect. And with our encoder wheels, we can change the speed. We can change our high and low positions. So if we want it bigger or smaller, we can change our high and low. If you're an MA1 person, if you right click on the effect, there's a button that says high and low. You can change that to center. So just as it was on and MA1, now we've got where our center is and how big we want it. So we can make it really small and change our center position to, you know, 75 rather than 50. And we can scale it out. But we want center position 50, let's face it. We want it to start with the center. Now we've got some fixtures roaming around. We can go to update, add new contents, and we can add it to room look. Lovely. And if we run our effects, hmm, there it is. Lovely. But when we come to Q2, or let's say where they next use Q5, oh no, that's still the effect is still running. Shock horror. What we need to do is we need to now stomp that effect. So throughout everything, because we've added in new information, during no point in our cue list have we told it where to stop, it's going to keep running. So we can stop it two ways. We can select, the, select our fixtures, run the effect again, and stomp the effect, and click update, and update Q2. And that will have stopped it. If we go to 5... Or we can use macros to do it. Now we're not going to go through macros today, but suffice to say the way we can stop all things is we can use an off menu, like so. So if you create an empty space and you go to system, I can never remember where they put the off menu. This was something that was added in 3.1. You can also just double tap the off button. It's running program. It's running somethings. Someone's probably screaming at me right now. It's in that page. Ah, running effects doesn't fit in. We need to make it slightly bigger. Ah, we're gonna have to create a new view. We'll use screen three because I'm being lazy today. So if we go back, we run our first thing, we go to screen three, we can see our sequence is running, and if there was an effect running, it would come up. There is a bug in 3.1 and 3.2 where effects do not appear. But what we can do here is we can stomp them all. We will actually go into macros, we'll go into basic macros. So another way of doing things is we can bring up pools, macros, and in the same way, we can also import all our macros the way we did our effects. But with macros, I like to bring in only what I use. So I can right click here, go load predefine, and we're looking for stomp commands. So I want, in this case, a stomp position. So a stomp position essentially runs stomp preset type position, and it'll stop the effect. Now all I'd have to do is update that effect. Oh, sorry, update that cue list. And we can also come back to our normal view if we need to. But there we go, that is effects and stomping. Shall we continue on? Let's continue on. I think we've got a bit more time left in this one. So we'll, uh, we'll return our little view. 
Let's actually create a new view on page three. Make it easy on ourselves. We can also clear a screen by clicking on an empty section and going clear screen. Console users can also hold down what is known as the nipple button and it's going to give you the option of clearing all screens. We can also do that on on PC, but we won't. So we'll set ourselves up with a little thing. We'll go, we want effects, scale it to about this big. We're going to want playbacks, big. And we'll throw in our macros as well. We'll cover, uh, we'll cover a macro as well today. And if, obviously we're going to need our fixtures. So we'll kill our playback for a sec. We'll go Mac 250s on and we'll run a pan wave. Now if you want dynamic control over effect speed, you can use things called speed masters. In every effect, there's a little thing that says speed group and we can assign these to speed masters. So if you right click and you assign it to speed master one, it's then being controlled by speed master one. But where the heck do I find speed master one? On an empty fader, I've essentially just created a window with just empty faders here. It's exactly the same as the executor 11516. We can click an empty one and go special master and find speed master 3.1 in this case. So that's the first one. And now we can control the speed. So we've got a lovely learn button. So we can make it fast. We can make it half speed, half speed, half speed, double speed, whatever you need to do with your fader. And then you've got dynamic control. You can also do it via a macro. So if we go load predefined and go assign effect speed master, when you run that macro, it's going to ask which speed master, speed group we want. We want number one, and we want effect one through five. And now it's added speed group one. So any effect that we create from here, so let's say 250s, dimmer random, well oh, dimmer random is a bad example. Let's go dimmer chase. We can speed that up or slow it down. Speedmasters. Anyway, thank you for watching. This concludes season one of the videos. The season one just indicates that we won't be recording anymore for the next week or so. We will be back depending on the feedback we get from these videos. That's not to say that you need to like or subscribe or anything. We'd love if you did that, uh, especially subscribing, because it just makes obviously publicity and making sure that we get these resources into the hands of people easier. But um, we just want to gauge the questions. We want to see where people's user level is, because we're kind of catering for advanced users and beginner users are not much for intermediate. So we'll see how we're hitting with this series. Anyway, my name is Alex Hughes. Thank you for watching season one. Uh, feel free to drop a comment or email us. We love getting messages via the, uh, the Facebook group, which is console training. Uh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. It's, it's been, it's been a couple of good years of videos and June's been a really good uh, bit of time for me because I've had some spare time to make videos. Hopefully they've been helpful. Thanks.